Today I'm going to be showing you how to get started using Adobe Illustrator for your iPad. So let's jump in. So if you have an Adobe Illustrator account, whether it's through the cloud or just the individual app, it'll give you access to the app for your iPad. And so you'll sign in using the same account. And when you do, it'll take you to a home page just like this. And this will look very familiar to you if you've used it on your computer. And they have here down at the bottom where you can click on some of their predetermined sizes to be able to start creating. Over on the left hand corner bottom is create new. You could click on that and create a new project from scratch. And if you have any projects already saved on your cloud, they will also come up here. So you can be able to interact with your projects on your iPad as well as on your desktop. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with a completely brand new project. And so I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and click create new. And then they have several different presets through here that you can pick from. We're just gonna do a basic illustration here and we're gonna name this, call this test project. And you can dial in any of these changes as you need to. You could change your color mode depending on if you want RGB or CMYK. We're just gonna leave it as is. And we're going to select the postcard there and we're going to go create file. Now, one of the things that I really like about using this on your iPad is the layout is very familiar and similar to what you have on your desktop. So to transition from one to the other is very seamless. You learn one, you learn the other, which is really nice. So let's talk a little bit about this layout right here. So in the center, you have your artboard, which is where you'll be doing all your work. And then on the right side has some functions for the activity of the artboard. And then over on the left side are some of the tools that you'll be using, such as shapes or lines or colors, things like that, okay? So we're gonna start over here on the top right-hand corner where you see kind of the two stacks of paper, that's your layers. And we're gonna click on that. And this is where you will have all the layers for your project as they're stacked up upon each other and the groups of the layers as well. You can also lock those or unlock them. You can hide them from view and do all of that. And then you can see where it says layers, click the plus sign and add more layers to as you need those. And then as you lift those up and kind of move them around, you can adjust the order of the layers that you see on the page. So we'll just click on that layers button again and slide that over. Then right below there, you click on that, has some property information. And then below that is your precision tool. So this is really nice because this kind of guides your work on your iPad, whether you're using just your finger or you're using the Apple Pencil tool. This really kind of helps make things a little bit more organized because you can allow it for snapping. You can turn that on and off so you can snap to the grid or snap to the guidelines. And what that does is, is it allows for much more precision in how you're moving your finger across the page so that it'll kind of snap the lines to line up with others and give you the option that way, okay? And so below that, you see your grid, you can turn that on. And you got a couple of different options. You can just do the dot or the grid, turn that off, or you can do rulers. So you can see just the size across the top and the side so that you can see where your guidelines are. So I like working with the grid so I can kind of see where everything is gonna lay out and how that's gonna look. We're just gonna tap that ruler marker again and take that away. Now, just like most things on your iPad, if you pinch and squeeze the screen, you can adjust the size. So you can bring it bigger or smaller so that you can work with it that way. So let's make a couple of shapes just to show you how this all works. So when we select the shape tool over here on the left side, you can see you can make a square, circle, triangle, things like that. Then down below there, you see those red slashes. That means that I have no fill color and no outline color. So we wanna change that. The fill, if you tap on that top part, you can slide your color wheel around, make it whatever color you want, or you can select that you want no fill color. And then down below that, same sort of thing, you can select the outline. Let's just say we want that in black. And now when we make our shape, we just go like that and we make another shape. And you can even grab the lines and kind of the handles on the side and corners. As I'm tapping the screen and sliding, it's sort of, snapping to those guidelines that we laid out there earlier. So depending on how you wanna do that, you could turn those on or off as needed, okay? Now, when you have a shape selected, you can go down here to your fill and say, maybe I do want that to be a blue color. And you can add that in there there. So you can always adjust things after the fact. 
So while we're talking about that, let's talk about your selection tool. Up here at the top with the little arrow, you click on that, and now you can grab these shapes that you already put down and change whatever you want in there. Okay, let's say we want that one, and we just want that to be a green color with no outline. Okay, and now you have that. So now you see how we're, we're grabbing those and making adjustments, but we can also tap on it and move it around the screen. You can even slide it off. You can make it smaller with that selection tool. And then while we have that selected, the one right below that is to make adjustments to the shape individually. So you can make the corners rounded there, just like that. You can grab the little handles there to be able to move those out. And again, at any point, you can always zoom into the screen so you can make more precise adjustments right in there like that. And I'm doing all of this with just my finger on the screen. You can make very complicated shapes however you want them to look. And then you can zoom out and get the whole scope of that. And even after you made those changes, we can now go in here. Let's say we want that to be a lighter blue and you can make those changes after the fact. So everything's dynamic, everything's moving. And if we go back over to our layers, you can see all of that is within those initial layer grouping, okay? And then of course you can take and move those around however you want. So maybe we want that part of that other layer and you're gonna make those adjustments that way too. So it gives you all the functionality right in there at your finger, literally at your fingertips. Now we also have the pen tool. If you wanna click on that and you can make more, let's get a different color here. And you can make the pen tool and you can sort of create your shapes that way and make them as you go. If you see what I'm doing here, I'm just sort of building out the shape and you got your handles to make those adjustments just like that. And again, just like on your computer, if at any given point you go, oh, I made a mistake, up at the top row, you can see you could do the undo and you can backtrack your way out of there and you can just back your way out or maybe redo, undo, and you can make adjustments that way. And if you want to go in there, you can take this whole thing and say, hey, I don't want to see that, but I, maybe I want to toggle that on later. Okay, get this big green one out of there, remove that. Then right below the pen, you have your pencil tool. We click on that again, and you can see you've got all the different options there as well. You can do a dotted line or a stitch or border. And now when we draw that, it makes it with the dashed lines as well. So that's sort of the free draw. And again, that works with the pen tool your Apple Pencil if you have that, and you could really draw that however you want. Maybe we want this to be with a no fill. And then as we just do a free draw, then you can see it has all the points there that you can make adjustments as you need to. And so then we, you can resize that, readjust it however you want there. So that's, to me, I think it's one of the powers of using it on the iPad is you can really use a pencil tool to get very precise in your illustrations. And of course you have your eraser tool, you click on that. And again, you just go through, erase whatever you want in there. Maybe we wanna erase this section and we erase that out. Okay, oh, I got one too far over. Again, you can just erase that out, just like that. And then it readjusts the shape accordingly. And one of the things that I like about the eraser tool is you can sort of, so we have this like teal box up here, is that if I go in and I just want to erase this chunk here, it now adjusts those lines to reflect that. You can do like this, right? And you can just do a little, like make a little river through your design, whatever you want. And it adjusts everything to fit that, which is really handy. Of course, you can add text on there. You can do the different things like that. You can import photos or pictures from your camera roll if you want to do that. Now let's talk a, a little bit more about the gestures that you can use on your iPad. Now we talked about being able to pinch zooming in and out. If you tap with two fingers, it will undo anything you just did. And if you tap with three fingers, it will redo anything you did. So getting used to using those gestures on your iPad will just make the work go that much smoother and, and faster. And if you're zooming in, if you just do a quick pinch, it'll fit the 
artboard to the screen, just like that. Even if you're zoomed out, you just do a quick pinch and it'll fit the artboard to the screen. That's a handy one too, because sometimes I get lost in my design and I just want to see the whole picture together. What's also nice about working on the iPad is everything is automatically saving to the cloud. So at any given point, I can stop, exit out of this, and it'll be available for me later, whether I'm on my iPad or on my computer. The other options up here at the top is you can go to the share button and you could share this with somebody else on your team or somebody else that needs to be a part of your project. So we'll just exit that out or the little upload button. You can click on that and you can publish and export that to social media or just export it as a PNG and save it onto your camera roll all within there as well. So I hope you found this helpful to get you started using Illustrator on your iPad and I will see you in the next video.